Can I be of any assistance, Monsignor? You most certainly can, Father. I am the Bishop of Matopo. Bishop of Matopo? Africa. Impartibus infidelium. Is there a garage near here? Yes, but I'm afraid it's closed because of a funeral. The proprietor's mother-in-law has died. May she rest in peace. What a nuisance. He should be back in a few hours. A few hours? There's a restaurant nearby. Monsignor, if you would honor me by sharing my simple lunch and a glass of our local wine. A glass of wine is essential in my situation. Thank you. Try to leave Rosinante in the shade, it's kinder. She's getting on in years. And has always served me well. Rosinante? So called after my ancestor's horse. You see, my name is Quixote. <laughs> I am honored to be a guest in the house of Don Quixote. Sadly, my bishop doesn't approve of Don Quixote. He considers Cervantes an overrated writer and the Don pure fiction. Holiness and literary appreciation don't always go together. Ah! Don Quixote riding his Rosinante into battle against the giants. If you'll excuse me, Monsignor. We have a guest for lunch. Only your steak and a salad. My steak's always enough for two, and the bishop clearly needs food. The bishop? I won't serve him. Not our bishop. The bishop of Matopo, Africa. You can't give a bishop horse meat. My steak is horse meat. Always has been. How can I give you beef on the money you allow me? Oh dear, oh dear. 
We can only pray he doesn't notice. After all, I never have. An agreeable wine, your Manchegan wine. But the steaker, the steaker, never at any table have I tasted, and I am tempted to blaspheme and say, so divine a steak. A little of our Manchegan cheese, and perhaps a little more wine to go with it. You are in Spain on holiday, Monsignor? Not exactly. The Holy Father has entrusted me with a little confidential mission in Madrid. Monsignor, there is one question I have often asked myself, a question most likely to occur to a countryman. Would you consider it wrong to pray to God for the life of a horse? No. The fathers of the church teach us that God created animals for man's use, and a long life of service for a horse is as desirable as a longer life for your Rosinante or my Mercedes. I was thinking more of a prayer for its happiness and even for a good death. A good death for a man means a death in communion with God. A promise of eternity. We may pray for the terrestrial life of a horse, but not for its eternal life. That would be verging on heresy. There is a movement in the church which would grant that a dog may have an embryo soul. But if a dog has a soul, why not a rhinoceros or a kangaroo? Or a mosquito? <laughs> Exactly, Father. I've never understood how a mosquito could have been created for man's use. A mosquito may be likened to a scourge in the hands of God. It teaches us to endure a pain for the love of him. That painful buzz in the ear. Maybe it is God buzzing. The same could be said of a flea, hopping. These are great mysteries. Where would our faith be if there were no mysteries? I do have a bottle of cognac, Monsignor. Mr. He's drunk quite enough for a bishop. Shh. The poor bishop's very worried about his car. Feels it has failed him. Probably his own fault. When I was a girl living in Africa, Negroes and bishops always forgot to fill up with petrol. If it's simply that, we can't possibly tell him. It would make him feel undignified. What condition did you find the Mercedes? Has it been bewitched by some sorcerer in this dangerous region of La Mancha? Your car is working again, Monsignor. A miracle. I did take a look at the engine, and you were very low in petrol. That was easy to remedy, but there was some... Um, I never know the technical terms. Ah, it wasn't only the petrol. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived in El Toboso? Since my childhood, Monsignor. Except during my studies for the priesthood. Where did you study? Madrid. I would have preferred Salamanca, but the standard there was beyond me. A man of your ability is wasted in El Toboso. Surely your bishop must recognize this. Alas, my bishop knows how small my abilities are. 
Could your bishop have mended my car? A priest who can set before an unexpected guest good wine and cheese and a remarkable steak can hold his own in the highest of circles. We are here to bring sinners to repentance. And there are more sinners among the bourgeois than among pests. I would have you go forth like your famous ancestor Don Quixote on the high roads of the world. He was a madman, Monsignor. Would you have me tilt at windmills? It was only by tilting at windmills that Don Quixote found the truth on his deathbed. There are no birds this year in last year's nests. It's a beautiful phrase, but what did you mean by it? I have never quite made it out myself. But surely the beauty is enough. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Monsignor. Deeply sorry for you. Capitalist money turns the heads of honest men. You've been let down by your party. It's not a question of my party. Three men alone have done this to me. How? Ah. Business expansion, bribery. There are traitors in every party. Even in yours, Father Quixote, there was Judas. And in yours, Stalin. Wash my hands of El Toboso. Next time, you could be re-elected. Tonight, I shall get drunk. Come to my house. Have a glass of honest vodka. Oh, Polish vodka, Father, from a Catholic country. I've never tasted vodka. from the bishop. So I see. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> what does it say? He wants to drive me away from El Toboso. received instruction from the Holy Father that on the recommendation of the Bishop of Motopo, I am to be promoted to the rank of Monsignor. A recommendation which I need hardly add would not have been made by me, your own Bishop. I can only pray that you will not disgrace the title the Holy Father has seen fit to grant you. Certain scandals, which were only forgiven because of the ignorance of a parish priest, would have far greater resonance if caused by a Monsignor. What scandals? My dear Sancho, in vinculus, giving money to an organization which helped Generalissimo Franco's prisoners to escape is plain wickedness to the bishop. You believe that Invinculus looked after prisoners' spiritual needs and the Easter offering belongs to the priest? I should have inquired further. It was a noble act. He considers El Toboso too small to be in the hands of a Monsignor. He 
wants to have me move to another diocese. What will you do? I shall obey orders. I'll go where I'm sent. And preach to the converted, as you do here. That's an easy sneer, Sancho. I doubt if anybody is totally converted. Not even the Pope? Perhaps, poor man, not even the Pope. And you, Father? Oh, I'm as ignorant as anyone in the parish. It's only that I've read more books when I was a student. But one forgets. But you do believe in all that nonsense. God, the Trinity, the Virgin Birth, the Immaculate Conception. I want to believe, and I want others to believe. Why? I want them to be happy. And let them drink a little vodka. That's better than make-believe. Vodka wears off. It's wearing off even now. So does belief. Your belief? And your belief. Why do you say that? It's life, Father, and it's dirty work. Belief dies away like the desire for a woman. Do you think it would be bad for me to have another glass? My parents wanted me to be a priest. I even studied at Salamanca. Never told you that before, Father. In vodka veritas. And now you have marks on your shelves. Of course. Das Kapital? Oh, I haven't read all of that for a long time. To tell the truth, I've always found parts of it remote. Well, I imagine you find parts of the Bible dull, too. The Gospels are not dull. <laughs> you know, Father, you remind me of your ancestor. He believed in all those old books of chivalry, completely out of date, even in his day. I've never read a book of chivalry in my life. But you still read those old books of theology. The voice of the church doesn't date, Sancho. <laughs> you are like Don Quixote, Father. He read his books in secret. And one day he rode off on Rosinante and did all his deeds of chivalry in a world that didn't believe in those old stories. Accompanied by an ignorant man called Sancho. I think I'll take a holiday. I haven't been out of El Toboso since the death of that scoundrel Franco. The bishop could hardly deny me a short holiday. Monsignor Quixote must travel to Madrid accompanied by Sancho. Why Madrid? To buy the uniform. Uniform? What uniform? The purple socks, Monsignor, and the purple bib. Rubbish. Nobody's going to make me wear purple socks and a purple fichier. You are in the army of the church, Father. You can't refuse the badges of rank. I never asked to be made a Monsignor. Of course, you could retire from the army altogether. Could you retire from the party? I doubt if we're the right traveling companion, Sancho. A big gulf separates us. A big gulf separated your ancestor from the one it amuses you to call mine. And yet... Yes. And yet... Good night, Sancho. Good night, Father. Well, I am Father Herrera. What is it you want? The bishop has sent me to stay here whilst the Monsignor is on holiday. Who cares about the bishop? Wait there. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. I never drink coffee.
What a violent woman. She said something very rude about the bishop. Like all of us, she has her prejudices. The bishop would not have been pleased, Monsignor. Have you experience of parish work? Not directly, Monsignor. I wish you wouldn't call me Monsignor. I prefer Father. I have been His Excellency's secretary for three years, since I left Salamanca. The bishop suggested I stay for a few days to help you settle in. A caution on His Excellency's part, which I do not consider really necessary. You may find it difficult at first. There are many Teresas in El Toboso. Will you have steak for lunch, Father? Two steaks, Teresa, please. Tomorrow I'll give us four cases of wine. You can't trust the wine in Madrid. Thanks to me, we've got an honest cooperative here. Do we have to go to Madrid? I don't want to overtire Rosinante. The purple socks. Sancho. Your ancestor had a proper respect for the uniform of a knight errant, even though he had to put up with the barber's basin as a helmet. <laughs> you are a Monsignor errant, and you must wear purple socks. They said the Don was mad. They'll say the same of me. Indeed, I must be a little mad. I'm mocked with the title of Monsignor, and I'm leaving El Toboso in the hands of that young priest. I would like breakfast tomorrow morning at half past seven, after Mass. Mass is at six. At seven. Good night, Teresa. I've always said Mass at six. I would hope that by saying Mars at a later hour, there'd be more in the congregation. Do you not agree, Monsignor? Two or three, perhaps. Even one would be worthwhile. Father Eribelt Jona, a German. All the same, very sound on moral theology. I'm afraid I haven't read him for many years. Moral theology doesn't play a great part in parish work. I should have thought it essential in the confessional. The problems of people here are usually very simple. I just follow my instincts. Instinct must have a sound basis, Monsignor. I'm sorry, Father. I put my trust in these. St. Teresa of Avila, St. Francis de Sales, and, of course, the Gospels. must have something in common, Father. Or oh, why are we traveling together? Perhaps friendship? Is friendship enough? Is something the matter, Father? No. But we're leaving La Mancha behind. And nothing seems safe anymore. Not even your faith. would have preferred to eat under a cross. Is there much difference between the two? They're both protests against injustice. But one symbolizes tyranny, the other charity. What about the Inquisition? Fewer suffered under Torquemada than Stalin. You sure? Relative to the population of Russia in Stalin's day and of Spain in Torquemada's? I'm no statistician, Sancho, but at least Torquemada hoped his victims would find eternal happiness. And you, Father, do 
You really hope that one day Catholicism will lead men to a happy future? Oh, of course I hope. Only after death, though. <laughs> Sancho, do you hope that the real communism your prophet Marx spoke about will ever arrive in Russia? Yes, Father. I do hope. Although it's true. And I say this because your lips are sealed as a priest and mine are opened by the wine. But sometimes I do despair. Oh, despair, I understand. I know despair too, Sancho. And sometimes doubt. I hope that sometimes you doubt too. I try not to doubt. It's human to doubt. But for now, I am happy to be here, under the great symbol of the hammer and sickle. The poor sickle's been rather neglected of late in Russia, or they wouldn't have to buy so much wheat from the Americans. A temporary shortage. We can't control the climate yet. God can. You indulge too much, Father, in a dangerous drug. What drug? Opium. Oh, I understand. Your prophet Mark said religion is the opium of the people, but you take it out of context. In the last century, opium was not an evil drug. Laudanum was a tranquilizer for the well-to-do, one which the poor couldn't afford. Today, religion is the valium of the poor. That was all he meant. Man can't live without a tranquilizer. Then perhaps we should kill another bottle. Say half a bottle if we're to arrive safely in Madrid. Too much opium might be dangerous. We'll make a Marxist of you yet, Monsignor. I've never denied Marx was a good man. He wanted to help the poor, and that want will have saved him at the last. Your glass, Monsignor. I've asked you not to call me Monsignor. Why not call me Comrade? I much prefer it to Sancho. In recent history, Sancho, too many comrades have been killed by each other. I don't mind calling you friend. Friends are less apt to kill each other. What puzzles me, friend, is how you can believe in so many incompatible ideas. The Holy Trinity is worse than the higher mathematics. Can you explain the Trinity to me? It's more than they can do at Salamanca. I can try. Try then. Two bottles. Equal in size. The wine they contain was of the same substance and born at the same time. There you have God the Father, God the Son, and here in this half bottle, God the Holy Ghost. Same substance, same birth. They're inseparable. Whoever partakes of one partakes of all three. The Holy Ghost has always seemed a bit redundant to me. Well, we were not satisfied with two bottles, were we? That half bottle gave us the extra spark of life we needed. <laughs> you are very ingenious, friend. At least I know what you mean by the Holy Trinity. What's the matter, Father? May God forgive me for I've sinned. I think perhaps I'm not worthy to be a priest. What have we done? I've given wrong instruction. The Holy Ghost is equal in all respects to the Father and the Son, and I have represented him by a half bottle. Oh, don't worry, Father. The matter's easily settled. We'll throw away the half bottle and forget it. I'll fetch a full bottle from the car. <laughs> I did make you understand, perhaps, a little about the Trinity. 
Oh, I thought you spoke very well. I understand, yes, but believe, no. That will never do. Then will you please forget about the half bottle? It was a mistake I should never have made. I shall remember only the three full bottles. Oh dear, oh dear. Why do I have to buy these socks? Your socks will be our safeguard. Stuck away in El Toboso, you haven't realized that the ghost of Franco still patrols the roads of Spain. The Guardia Seville respects purple socks. Monsignor wants some purple socks. Of course. Monsignor, if you'll come this way. I just wanted to see if they demand any papers. He's a nylon. These are pure silk. These are cotton. I usually wear wool. We have wool, of course. But usually we find nylon and silk are preferred. It's a question of tone. Wool or the blur is purple. For me, it's a question of warmth. Uh, but we want the purple to catch the eye, as it were, from a distance. From a distance? We don't want the purple to look um, Accidental. No one has ever found fault with our purple. Even the woolen purple. For our purposes, the nylon is much the best. It has a shimmer. And then we will need a bib. A bib? I assume you mean a pechera. I have reluctantly agreed to the socks, but I absolutely refuse to wear a purple pechera. Only in emergency, Monsignor. I cannot imagine what emergency. I've explained that already. The state of the roads these days. And one purple pachera, please. Nylon! I suppose you uh, supply pretty well all the church needs. Uh, in the way of uh, decoration. Hmm? Vestments. Yes, we do. Berettas and the like. Of course. And uh, cardinals, hats. Oh, the Monsignor has not reached that stage yet. Of course, I only ask out of interest, but one must be prepared. Cardinal's hats are always received from His Holiness. <laughs> Want to go north? I hope we might take a turn in the direction of Barcelona. I'm guiding you to such a holy place as you're sure you'll want to say your prayers there. Do you see that great cross on the hill? That's where we're going. I thought you were making fun of me. Oh, Monsignor, I'm far too fond of you for that. See how high the guillotine rises? Or the gallows, if you prefer. Your friend, General Lissimo Franco, planned to be buried here like a pharaoh. More than a thousand prisoners from the Civil War were forced to excavate this tomb. And they were given their liberty in return. For many, it was the liberty of death. Valley of the Fallen. A remarkable engineering feat, rather like the pyramids. And like the pyramids, it required slave labor to accomplish it. As in your Siberian camps. At least Russian prisoners labor for the future of their country. This was for the glory of one man. I understood. This was meant to be a chapel of reconciliation. 
where the fallen on both sides were to be remembered. Can't you go just a little faster, Father? I don't want to overtire, Rosinan. In my opinion, a spoiler. Yesterday, the poor thing covered an immense distance. We are less than 200 kilometers from El Toboso. Her usual stint is 10, when I fetch wine from the cooperative. I think we're being followed. Why should we be followed? Who knows? I asked you to put on your purple bib. I did put on the socks. It's the Guardia. You see, Sancho, they weren't concerned with us. All the same, I wish you'd been wearing your bib. They can't see your socks. This sausage reminds me of the ring finger of Santa Teresa in the convent at Avila. You can see it if you want. And the confessional where she talked with St. John of the Cross. When I was a student, I used to visit a most beautiful girl in Avila. Why did you give up your studies, Sancho? I think perhaps her long golden hair was the main reason. She was the daughter of a chemist. He was a secret member of the party, and she used to supply us with clandestine contraceptives. I never had to practice coitus interruptus. But human nature is a strange thing. I used to go afterwards and say I was sorry Santa Teresa's ring finger. I laugh at your superstitions, Father, but I shared some of them in those days. Perhaps that's why I seek your company now. To find that youth again, when I half believed. And everything was so complicated and contradictory and interesting. I never found things so complicated. Were you never in love with a woman, Father? Never. Not in the way you mean. Were you never tempted? Never. Strange. And inhuman. I've been protected. It's rather like the taboo of incest. Not many people attempted to break that. There are so many alternatives to incest, like a sister of a friend. I had my alternative, too. She lived a very long way from El Toboso, in France. She lived at Lisieux. The Carmelites there have a special vocation to pray for priests. I hope, I believe, she prays for me. And I believe you're speaking of St. Therese of Lisieux. Glad there's one communist who's heard of her. We've done nothing wrong, Sancho. They judge my appearances. Have another glass of wine, Father. In your company, if I'm not careful, I'm afraid I shall become what I've heard called a whiskey priest. Maybe that's why I feel so hot. Or perhaps it's that absurd collar you're wearing. My collar is not at all hot. You try it. <laughs> if I remember rightly, Don Quixote's Sancho became governor of an island. So, with your help, 
I will become a governor of souls. Perhaps with this collar, I might hear a confession or two. Mm. Show me your papers. My wallet is in the car. We'll fetch it together. And yours, father? I'm not a father. Why are you wearing that collar? I borrowed it for a moment from my friend. He's a Monsignor. Monsignor? You can see by his socks. You lent your collar to this man? Yes, you see, I was feeling hot. Lenin? Is this yours? No. Is this your car? Yes. But this is not your book? No, it belongs to, um... Even Lenin isn't forbidden reading now. That's quite an early work, written mainly in the respectable city of Zurich. You might say a little time bomb made in the city of bankers. Time bomb? Uh, metaphorically. I see you studied this well. Several marked passages. Armed struggle pursues two different aims. In the first place, the struggle aims at assassinating individuals, chiefs and subordinates in the army and police. Are these your aims, Monsignor? If you are a Monsignor. It doesn't say here that you're a Monsignor. He's traveling incognito. Why incognito? Because he has that sort of humility which is often to be found in holy men. Where have you come from? The, the Monsignor has been praying at the tomb of the Generalissimo. Is that true? Well, yes, I did say a prayer or two. Oh, several prayers. One would hardly be enough. What do you mean, not enough? God can be hard of hearing. Give me your papers. Where are you going now? Avila. The Monsignor wants to say another prayer for the Generalissimo to the ring finger of Santa Teresa. He wants to do his best for the Generalissimo. Your card says you're the mayor of El Toboza. I was the mayor. I've lost my job. Uh, the Monsignor has been promoted out of his. Open the boot. Give me that bag. Why are you not wearing this? It's too noticeable. You're afraid to be noticed. What are those boxes? Manchegan white. You're well supplied. Yes, indeed. If you'd care for a couple. Write down. The so-called Monsignor offered us two bottles of wine. Where will we be staying in Avila? At the Parador, if they have room. We're on holiday. We take the luck of the road. We've taken the number of your car. What did you make of them? Well, we'll put it We've conquered the windmills, Father. It was easier for us than for your ancestor. We only had two. What windmill? Look. Guardia revolved with every wind. They were there with the Generalissimo. They're there now. If my party came to power, they'd turn with the wind from the east. Why were they so suspicious? Well, you must admit, lending me your collar was suspicious. And they'll warn the Guardia in Avila about us. I think Segovia would be better tonight. I'm sorry to deprive you of Santa Teresa's ring finger, Father. But tomorrow we'll visit a holier shrine than the one you prayed at today. My old professor. Perhaps I would have lasted longer here in Salamanca if Unamuno had stayed, but he went into exile. He wasn't a communist. I doubt if he was a socialist, but he couldn't stomach the Generalissimo. Many a priest gave a sigh of relief when they knew he was dead. And Franco, too, of course. 
If he had the intelligence to recognize the strength of his enemy, in a sense, he was my enemy, too. He kept me in the church for years with that half belief of his, which I was able to share for a while. How happy you must be with your complete belief in Karl Marx. Do I have a complete belief? Sometimes I wonder. The ghost of Unamuno still haunts me. I can hear him saying, there is a muffled voice of uncertainty which whispers in the ears of the believers. Who knows how we could live without it? He said that? Yes. Doubt again. Number 340. I prefer this to the Generalissimo's mountain. When I'm alone, I sleep more easily in a small bed. Yes? This is a truly welcoming little hotel. My room's very nice too. And what a large staff of charming young women for so small a hotel. Well, in a university city like Salamanca, there's always a lot of uh, customers. And it's so clean. Have you noticed how outside every room there's a pile of linen? They must change the linen every evening after the time of siesta. Oh! I see you have a little book of marks. May I borrow it? Yes, of course. The Communist Manifesto. It's a lot easier to read than Das Kapital. Did you order this, Sancho? Uh, no, no, I don't care for champagne, but um, it's a custom of the house. Perhaps we'd better drink a little to show we appreciate their kindness. Oh, it'll be included in the bill. So will their kindness. Don't be a cynic, Sancho. That was a very sweet smile the girl gave us. One can't pay for a smile like that. This damn cock one, come on. I don't think they mean us to drink the champagne. Ah, damn. What are you doing, Father? How do you keep the air in? Surely there should be some sort of nozzle. Oh dear, I'm so sorry, Sancho. I didn't mean to break your balloon. Was it a gift for a child? No, Father, it was a gift for the girl who brought the champagne. Don't worry, I have some more. Have you never seen a contraceptive before? Where have you brought me, Sancho? To a house I knew as a student. Wonderful how these places survive. They're more stable than any dictatorship, and war doesn't touch them, even civil war. You should never have brought me here. Don't worry, Father. I've explained things to the lady of the house. She won't be bothered in any way, and it's very quiet on the third floor. But why, Sancho? Why? I thought it was a good idea. If we'd stayed at a hotel, we would have had to register. So we're hiding in a brothel. You could put it that way. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, it's wrong of me to laugh. But I just thought... What would my bishop say if he knew? A monsignor in a brothel. Well, why not? Christ mixed with publicans and sinners? All the same. I think I'd better go upstairs and 
read myself to sleep with the prophet Marx. But be prudent, dear Sancho. Be prudent. Why don't you say what you're thinking, Father? About what? About last night, of course. I was very pleased with the marks you lent me. I'm not talking about marks, I'm talking about me. You? You know well enough what I was up to. I told you clearly enough last night. Ah, but I'm trained to forget what I'm told. I wasn't in the confessional. No, but it's very much easier if one is a priest to treat everything one is told as a confession. I never repeat what I hear, even to myself, if possible. I like your friend Marx. This is the work of a good man. But he's a religious man. All that is solid melts into air. All that is holy is profaned. Father, you're intoning as though you were in church. Heavenly ecstasies of religious fervor, chivalrous enthusiasm. Father, that man is listening to every word you say. Of course, like all prophets, Marx does make mistakes. I don't like the look of his briefcase. It's an official-looking briefcase. I can smell the secret police from 30 meters away. I do find his admiration for the bourgeois a little far-fetched. What do you mean he hated the bourgeois? Perhaps, poor man, he was rejected by what he loved. Listen to this, Sancho. Father, if you must read aloud, please read in a low voice. The bourgeois, during its rule of scarce 100 years, has created more massive production forces than have all the preceding generations put together. Application of chemistry to industry and agriculture, steam navigation, railways, electric telegraphs. Makes one almost proud to be a bourgeois, doesn't it? What a magnificent colonial governor Marx would have made. I only hope he doesn't come back with the police. Get the number of the car, Father. We'll turn at the next corner. Don't look round. Don't look round, Father. We'll go into a bar, have a drink, and go out the back way. There's no back way. We go into another bar. If I have any more coffee, I shan't sleep tonight. Have an orange juice. I'm going to look for a back door. Monsignor, what do you want? I want to speak to you, alone. I am alone. It's impossible to speak to you here. Please, go through the door to the back. To the right.
Monsignor. Yes? I want you to hear my confession. This is hardly a suitable place. And why have you chosen me and not your own priest? I have just been burying him. I am an undertaker. Go away, Sancho. I'm hearing a confession. Since my last confession, I have committed the following sins. I have stolen this handle and another like it. Then you must give them back. The owner is dead. I buried him this morning. Then you must return the handles to the heirs. Father Gonzalez left no heirs. What are these handles? When did you steal them? I charged for them in my bill, then I took them off the coffin so that I could use them again. Do you often do that? It's common practice. All my competitors do it. Have you confessed to other occasions? No. I told you, Monsignor, it's a recognized practice in my profession. Really, it's only a rent we charge until the internment is over. Then why are you confessing now? It seems somehow different with Father Gonzalez. He would have been so proud of the brass handles. It showed how esteemed he was in the parish, because naturally it was the parish who paid. And you contributed? Of course, yes. I was very fond of Father Gonzalez. So in a way, you're stealing from yourself? Not, not stealing. But if you say you're not stealing, and that it is the practice of your colleagues to remove these handles, what is troubling your conscience? Oh, don't worry about such little things. Go home and have a good sleep. Perhaps you have stolen. Do you think God cares for a small thing like that? He has created a universe. And you? You've stolen two brass handles. Don't feel so important. Say you're sorry for your pride and go home. But please, my absolution. Ego te absolvo a peccatis tuis in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. Go in peace. I didn't find the right words. Why do I never find the right words? Interesting, Sancho. So that's what they call a film. Well, they were only simulating, Father. How do you mean, simulating? What were they pretending to do? To make love. Oh, so that's how it's done. I always imagine it to be a great deal more simple and more enjoyable. They seem to suffer a lot. From the sounds they made. I was afraid you might be shocked. But you chose the film, Father. By the title. But it didn't seem to have much to do with what we saw. All the same, I was impressed by the silence of the audience. They took it so seriously. I was really afraid I might laugh. You wanted to laugh?
it was difficult not to laugh. Lord, if I'm incapable of human love, I must be incapable of love for you. Make me human. Let me feel temptation. For God's sake, Father, if you've taken a vow of silence, go into a monastery. There are the Carthusians at Burgos and the Trappists at Orsera. I've sometimes thought, may God forgive me, that I've been specially favoured because I've never been troubled by sexual desires. You're very lucky. Am I? Not to know temptation. et in locum refugii. The bishop seems to be a foreigner. He's not a bishop, he's a monsignor. Is that your car parked up there? Belongs to the monsignor. I told him to keep it locked. He'd even left the key in the starter. It's not a safe thing to do around here. Huh. Seems peaceful enough. Have you seen a man with a bullet hole through his right trouser leg and a false moustache? No. Shiokui credidi. No hat or jacket. Striped shirt. Nobody like that's been round here. Got the bullet hole in Zamora. Narrow escape. One of ours. Not passed anyone on the road? No. What's he done? Robbed a bank at Benaventi. Shot the cashier. Escaped on a Honda. Found abandoned. The Honda, I mean. Five kilometers away. That's why it's not safe laving your car with the key in the starter. La queus contritus des et nos liberatis sumus. What's the Monsignor saying? Ah, I'm not a linguist myself. Well, keep your eyes open. And don't give a lift to a stranger. Why were you talking Latin to him? It seemed a good thing to do. Why? I wanted, if possible, to avoid a lie. What lie? I was suddenly confronted with the, you might say, temptation. How did you find the cheese in the car? Yes, but I gave it to him. The Guardia? No, no, the fellow he was looking for, of course. You mean you've seen him? Yes, that's why I was afraid of questions. For God's sake, Father, where is he? In the boat of the car. It was careless of me to leave the key in the car. Somebody might have driven away with him. Don't you realize what it means, hiding a fugitive from justice? What made you do it? He asked me to help him. He said he was falsely accused and mistaken for another man. With a bullet hole in his trousers. I was going to die. What kept you? We're trying to do our best for you. Take my advice. Clear off. That way. Keep to the fields until you can drown yourself in the city. How can I keep to the fields with shoes which are rotten from the soles up? You robbed a bank. Get yourself a new pair. I didn't rob a bank. Search me. You call yourselves Christians? I don't. I'm a Marxist. Yeah, but I've got a pain in my back. Ah. Oh. Oh, I can't walk a step. I think I've got some aspirin in the car. What size shoes do you take? I can't think why you went to rob a bank in rotten shoes. I took the wrong pair by mistake. Where do you want to go? Drop me by the, uh, the cathedral in Lyon. <laughs> you are a very bad driver. What happened to your Honda? The Guardia said you abandoned it. 
I ran out of petrol. <laughs> I've forgotten to fill the tank. Can't you drive any quicker? No. Rosinant is very old. She's apt to break down at over 40. I wish you would relax and put that gun down. Sometimes Rosinante behaves a little like a camel. If she shakes you up suddenly, that thing might go off. You wouldn't be very happy with another man's death on your conscience. What do you mean, another man? That poor fellow in the bank whom you killed. You didn't kill him. I missed. Anyway, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bank. It was a self-service store. Guardia said a bank. They'd say it was a bank, even if it was a public lavatory. Your moustache has fallen off. It's stuck to your shoe. My shoe. At least he didn't assault me, like the galley slaves assaulted my forebear. You wait here. I'll go and buy you some shoes. If you don't mind. I'll go into the cathedral. It's been rather a strain. I'd like a little quiet. And to say my prayers. I thought you were doing a lot of that while you were driving. I was. Prayers for that poor man. And to thank God for our safety. They seem all right. I'm anxious, Sancho. You have every reason to be. If that young fool is caught. I was thinking of Teresa. Something's wrong. I can feel it in my head like a thunderstorm. I must telephone her. This is Father Quixote, Teresa. Praise be to God. Where are you? Leon. Leon? You shouldn't have told her. Father, the bishop's in a terrible state. Is he ill? He's in a holy rage. What about? About you, of course. They say you're mad. The Guardia have been searching for you in Avila. I haven't been in Avila. They know that now. They say you were in Valladolid and you changed clothes with the Red Mare to escape. It's not true. How'd you come to know all this, Teresa? Do you think I'd let them use your telephone, not leave the door open? Let me speak to Father Herrera. But he's gone to see the bishop. The bishop's in such a state, it wouldn't surprise me if he telephoned the Holy Father himself. I heard Father Herrera say to the bishop that the, the Holy Father made a terrible mistake appointing you Monsignor. I said that's blasphemy. The Holy Father can't make mistakes. Oh, yes, he can, Teresa. Little mistakes. I'd better come home at once. No, you, you can't do that, Father. The Guardia will grab you for sure and you'll end your days in a madhouse. But I'm no more mad than Father Herrera is. Or the Bishop, come to that. Father Herrera said to the Bishop, he must be kept out of mischief for the sake of the Church. 
<laughs> you will stay away. I must think about it. Goodbye, Teresa. They said your ancestor was mad too. Perhaps now they'll start burning your books. God forbid. I ought to go home. That would prove you mad. We've got to get away from here, but not back to El Toboso. I wish you hadn't told Teresa you were in Leon. She has a mouth like a padlock. Besides, we've done nothing wrong. It's not what we've done. The danger is what they think we've done. In a situation like ours, with no food, I consider it wise for me to drink another half bottle. For you? Maybe not. In which case, when I have drunk my half of the bottle, I will have to judge what is wise for me to do with your half of the bottle. In my wisdom, I must prevent you drinking more than your share. Why should our lack of food affect the wisdom of our choice? Well, that's obvious. Wine contains sugar. And sugar is supposed to be a very valuable food. In that case, if we had enough wine, we would never starve. Exactly. But there is a fallacy to be found in every logical argument. If we substituted wine for food, we would have to stay where we are, and eventually we would run out of wine. Why should we have to stay? Because neither of us would be capable of driving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true enough. Logical thoughts often lead to absurd situations. A popular saint of La Mancha lost her virginity when she was raped by a moor in her own kitchen, although he was unarmed, and she had a kitchen knife in her hand. Well, she wanted to be raped, I suppose. Now, her thought was quite logical. Her virginity was less important than his salvation. By killing him at that moment, she would rob him of any chance of salvation. An absurd, <laughs> yet when one comes to think of it, it's a beautiful story. Monsignor, the wine is making you talkative. Mm -hmm. Thank God, in spite of your saintly books, you can still drink deep when the mood takes you. Uh, unlike your ancestor, as a traveling companion, Don Quixote wouldn't have suited me at all. Why are you always saddling me with my ancestor? I was only comparing. You talk about him at every opportunity. You pretend that my saint's books are like his books of chivalry. You compare our little adventures with his. Those Guardia were Guardia, not windmills. I am Father Quixote, not Don Quixote. My adventures are my own adventures, not his. I go my way, my way, not his. I'm sorry, Father. I thought you were proud of your ancestor. I didn't mean to offend. Oh, I know what you think. You think my God is an illusion, like the windmills. But he exists, I tell you. I touch him. Is he hard or soft? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to joke. I respect your belief as you respect mine. But there is a difference. I know Marx and Lenin existed. You only believe. It's not a question of belief. I touch him. Father, we have had a good time together. This is the third bottle. 
I raise my glass in honor of the Trinity. You can't refuse that toast with me. No, I can't. My little drunk, Sancho. Father, our friendship... Yes, yes, nothing could alter that. If only I had the right words. For what? And the learning, too. I'm a very ignorant man. There was so much I was supposed to teach an El Toposa that I didn't understand. The Trinity, natural law, mortal sin. I taught words out of textbooks. I never said to myself, do I really believe these things? I went home and read my saints. They wrote of love. That I could understand. The rest of it didn't seem important. <laughs> I don't understand what worries you, Father. Well, among other things, that film. Why wasn't I shocked? Why didn't I walk out? I don't feel at all myself, Sancho. Giddy. You are a little drunk, Father. Are these the usual symptoms? Giddiness? Talking too much? Yes. And sadness. I don't feel up to driving. I could take the wheel. Well, Ross and Auntie wouldn't like a strange hand. Let me sleep a little before we go on. If I've said anything to offend you, Sancho, forgive me. You've said nothing bad, Father. Father Quixote! Virgin, have you done to the farm? He'll wake up, ain't he? Go and make him a strong cup of coffee. Don't worry. You'll soon be yourself again. How did I come here? I gave you a little injection to calm you. Wasn't I calm? Well, you were asleep. But I thought in the circumstances our coming might make you excitable. Father Herrera was with me, of course. And you brought me here against my will? This is your home, my old friend. You've even undressed me. 
We took off your outer things, that's all. It's a blessing to see you alive and well. well not quite well yet. But after a few weeks of quiet... A few weeks of quiet, indeed. I shall get up. Uh, Teresa, where are my trousers? Father Herrera locked them up in a cupboard. God forgive me, Father. I, I didn't know what he intended. How is he? You two have been guilty of a criminal act. Abduction, medical treatment without the patient's consent. I had clear instructions from the bishop to bring you home. Bugger the bishop. <laughs> those two on the telephone to each other morning noon and night it's always excellency 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 you think that father Herrera was talking to God himself my ancestor was at least spared the bishop when he was brought home I don't think they'll try to burn my books Monsignor Quixote his excellency is here I'm sorry excellency if you'll Give me a few minutes. Stay where you are, Monsignor. I trust you are feeling better. I'm feeling perfectly well, thank you. My holiday has done me good. Not if the reports I have received are true. What reports? I do not pay attention to every rumor, Monsignor, and I'll take your word, if you give it to me, that you didn't go into a certain shop in Madrid and ask for a cardinal's hat. That wasn't me. My friend made a harmless joke. Harmless? That friend of yours, I believe, is the former communist mayor of El Toboso. You choose very unsuitable friends. I don't need to remind Your Excellency that some of the friends of our law... Were... I know what you're going to say. The text about publicans and sinners has always been very carelessly used to justify a lot of imprudence. But I would remind you, Monsignor, that our Lord was the Son of God. To Him, all things were permissible, but for a poor priest like you and me... Isn't it more prudent to walk in the footsteps of St. Paul? You know what he wrote to Titus. There are many rebellious spirits abroad who talk of their own fantasies and lead men's minds astray. They must be silenced. Your friend, Father, had apparently been drinking very heavily when you were both found. He didn't even wake up. Father Herrera noticed a great deal of wine in your car. I realize that in your nervous condition, wine must have proved a serious temptation. Personally, I always leave wine to the mass. I prefer water. I like to pretend that I am drinking the pure water of Jordan. Perhaps not so pure. I can't help thinking that Nahum and the Syrian bathed seven times in the Jordan and left all his leprosy behind. An old Jewish legend. Of course I agree that St. Paul is a reliable guide. And you will certainly remember that he also wrote to Titus, no I'm wrong, it was to Timothy, do not confine thyself to water any longer, take a little wine to relieve thy stomach. What I don't understand, Monsignor, is why you changed clothes with this communist. It was only a collar. Why even a collar? He thought I must be suffering from the heat, so I gave it to him to try. A story came to the ears of the parish priest in Valladolid that a bishop or a Monsignor had been seen coming out of a scandalous film. What was so shocking was he was seen coming out laughing. Not laughing, Excellency, perhaps. Smiling. I don't understand your presence at such a film. I was deceived by the innocence of the title. Which was? A Maiden's Prayer. 
I sometimes wish the title of maiden were confined to our lady. Of course, these are minor matters in the eyes of the Guardia Civil, however scandalous they may appear in the eyes of the Church. But I and my colleague in Avila have had very great difficulty in persuading them to shut their eyes to what was a grave criminal offence. We had to approach a high authority in the Ministry of the Interior, luckily a member of Ever's Day. He saw at once it would do the Church untold harm if a Monsignor appeared in the dock charged with helping a murderer escape. Not a murderer, Excellency. He misfired. A bank robber. No, no, it was a self-service store. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me with petty details. The Guardia and Leon found the man in possession of your shoes, clearly marked inside with your name. He did have a gun. They seem to have established that you hid him in the boot of your car and lied to the Guardia. I didn't lie, Excellency. The Guardia never asked me if he was in the boot. I am trying very, very hard. I repeat very hard to believe that you are too ill to realize what a dangerous situation you are in. Well, I suppose that applies to all of us when we begin to think. I was coming to that dangerous thought. Your communist companion no doubt led you to think in unacceptable ways. He didn't lead me, Excellency. He gave me the opportunity. On this holiday I have felt a freedom a very dangerous freedom, it seems to have been. But our Lord gave it to us, didn't he? Freedom. That's why they crucified him. Freedom? Freedom to break the law? You, a Monsignor? Freedom to go to pornographic films? Help murderers? He missed. And your companion, a communist, talking politics? No, no, we discuss much more serious things than politics. Though I admit I hadn't realized Marx had so nobly defended the church. Marx? Of course, I cannot agree with all his ideas, but I was most moved by his tribute to religion. I cannot stay here any longer and listen to the ravings of a sick mind. I shall pray for you. Yes? I've told the young fellow from the garage to go up to the church and keep Father Herrera busy with a long confession. I thought I heard Rossinanti. You did? I would never have recognized that poor dear with all that bright blue paint and a new number even. I, I, I can't unlock the door, but he'll get you out of here if you give him another minute. Who will? The mayor, of course. He's busy on the cupboard with Father Herrera's nail scissors. What's in the cupboard? Your trousers. Are you all right, Father? I'm all right. But what have you been doing to Rossinanti? An old friend of mine in the party has fixed her up. The Guardia won't recognize her. I'm going to start on your door. You don't have to. I can get through the window. I'm not going to wear it, Sancho. It's caused me enough trouble already. But we'll take it with us. It could be useful. Here are your shoes. What's this? It's from the bishop. You can wait until we've had a bottle of Manchegan.
Goodbye, Teresa. You've been very good to me and very patient. Tell me where you're going, Father. It's better you shouldn't know because they'll be asking you that. But I can tell you that I shall be taking a long rest, God willing, in a quiet place. Father, I feel as though we're saying goodbye forever. No, no, Teresa. For a Christian, there's no such thing as goodbye forever. Father Herrera has refused me absolution, Father. Will I go to hell? I very much doubt it. Why did he refuse you? He said I was making a mock of the confessional. Were you? I only told him I'd slept with a lot of girls. There aren't all that number in El Toboso, except for the nuns. For God's sake, let's be gone. What exactly did you say? Bless me, Father. Oh, no, I... leave out all those preliminaries. I told him I'd slept with some girls. He asked me how many, and I said around 65. And he turned me out of the box. I don't wonder. Herrera's coming out of the church. Make an act of contrition and promise you'll never lie in the confessional again. Not even if Teresa asks you to. I promise, Father. Go in peace. You. What would have happened? Perhaps the bishop would have tried to put me in an asylum. He'll never forget I gave money to Invinculus. My friendship for you began then, even though we'd hardly spoken. Oh, my goodness. The bishop. Well, open it. It's not a death warrant. How do you know? The days of talk with Marta are over. Well, it's short enough anyway. Suspension ad Venus. A sentence of death. After death, there's nothing more they can do. There remains only the mercy of God. Suspensio nata Venus means I am forbidden to say the Mass, either in public or in private. And I must hear no confession. I remain a priest, but a priest only to myself. A useless priest. Unable to serve others. I'm glad we're together, Sancho. I feel safe with you and Rosinante. I'm afraid El Toboso is no longer hope for me. Then we'll find you another one, Father. They're the Trappists at Oceana, but you wouldn't feel at home in a monastery. Well, I can leave you with them and cross the border into Portugal. I've got good friends in the party there. Food will be bad at the monastery, Father. The wine, too, perhaps. Well, we'd better stock up with some Galician wine. The Manchegan's going to be finished. Are you going up there to buy wine? Possibly. Give it up. He's mad. Who's mad? Senor Diego. He's got a cellar full of wine up there, yet he won't let me try a single glass. I was prepared to take a dozen cases. He said he didn't like my tie. 
There could be a difference of opinion about your tie. As a businessman, I can tell you that's not the way to do business. Now it's too late to get the wine elsewhere. What's the hurry? I promise the priest. I always keep my promise. It's a promise to the church. What does the church want with a dozen cases of wine? Well, it's not just the promise. I may lose my place in the procession. Unless the priest will take cash instead. He won't take checks. that about. No, no, no. You cannot buy wine here today. Signor Diego will have nothing to do with the feast. Feast? We don't want it for a feast. You're not Mexicans? No, we are not Mexicans. We are on our way to the Trappist de Rosera. Of your charity, Father, just a few bottles. How do you know I'm a priest? When you've been a priest as long as I have, you will recognize a priest, even without his collar. This is Monsignor Quixote from El Toboso. Quixote? Well, not surely. An unworthy descendant. <laughs> And, and, and your friend? I can't claim to be a true descendant of Sancho Panza. Just a family name in common. <laughs> come, come and sit down and have some wine. Thank you. So would you sit over there? You know, a, a Monsignor has never sat beneath my fig tree. <laughs> that... Sit with me, Senor Diego. I will fetch some more books. Yeah, and some more wine, Jose. We'll have a better feast than the Mexicans. <laughs> oh, if all the priests here were like my grandson. I, I can trust him, even with the vineyard. I, I saw him today pulling up the weeds, but I couldn't see them clearly any longer, and I thought, well, it's time for me in the vineyard to go. If only Jose had married and had a son. But... Is this his parish? No, he lives 40 kilometers away. Some of the priests here have driven him from his old parish. He was a danger to them. The poor people loved him because he refused to take money and say responses when anyone died. Gabble a few words and ask a thousand pesetas. <laughs> so, the priests had him sent away, even though there were some good Mexicans who defended him. But who are these Mexicans? Uh, they have too much money. And they have been away too long. But you're not taking any harm, Monsignor, please. Tell them about the Mexicans. Well, they were all born here, but they left Galicia to escape poverty and went to Mexico. They wanted money, and they found money. And now they've come back to spend money and build rich houses. They give money to those priests, thinking they're giving to the church. Yes, and the priests are greedy for more. They prey on the poor, and they prey on the superstition of the rich. Perhaps some of the Mexicans really believe they can buy their way to heaven. But whose fault is that? The priests know better, and they sell Our Lady. You should see the feast they're celebrating today. The priest puts Our Lady up for auction. The four Mexicans who pay the most carry her in the procession. But this is unbelievable. Well, go and see for yourself. Immediately. No, no, the procession boat has started yet. Finish your wine first. I'm sorry, Senor Diego. This is a truly magnificent wine, but I have lost my taste for it. You have told me my duty. Go and see for yourself. So many banks in such a small place. Mexican money. There are times when I'm tempted to call you Compañero, but not yet. What do you propose to do, Father? I don't know. I'm frightened, Sancho. What, of them? Frightened of myself. I need my collar and my pechera. We're going into battle, Sancho. I need my armor. Even though it's as absurd 
as Mambrino's helmet. What's happening? The auction is over, Monsignor. They are fetching Our Lady from the church. It went better than last year. The winner paid 40,000 pesetas. What does he win? Salvation for his sins. It's cheap at the Monsignor. price. Monsignor. Monsignor, will you give me a hundred peseta note? Why? I want to give it to Our Lady. Won't Our Lady accept coins? This is blasphemy. What do you mean, Monsignor? This is our feast day. You've made your protest, Father. Come away. Call the Guardia! Put down, Our Lady. How dare you clothe her like that? You might as well carry her through the streets naked. For God's sake, Father, come away! Who are you? I am Monsignor Quixote of El Toboso. He's an imposter. Monsignor, ask him where the money goes. <laughs> carry on with the procession. Over my dead body. Drive. You're a casualty. Give me the keys. Very Professor Pilbeam, you won't find much here about St. Ignatius. But at least he was a good soldier. And a good soldier would find more useful ways of suffering than throwing himself into a lot of thorns like your St. Benedict's. I'm not so sure that St. Ignatius was all that concerned about what was useful. <laughs> a soldier can be very romantic. It's for that reason he's a national hero. All Spaniards are romantic. So that sometimes we take windmills for giants. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I haven't much time for fiction, Father Leopoldo. Facts are what I like. Yes, if I could unearth one undiscovered document about St. Ignatius, I'd feel that all my work at the university had been worthwhile. I could die a happy man. Of course I'm not. But I think they've killed my friend. We only shot at the tires. He's a priest. The Monsignor. Yes, and if Monsignor Quixote hadn't stopped for a piss, we would have been safe inside your monastery by now. Don Quixote, that's impossible. Monsignor Quixote of El Toboso. He's alive. You're both under arrest. These men are injured. You can't take them away like this. They're wanted for causing a riot and stealing money. Uh, no. What's he trying to say? He's asking if Rosa Nat was all right. Rosa Nat? Rosa Nat, he was a horse. Father Francisco. Yes, Father? Please telephone for a doctor. You're yes, both father. coming with us. Not in this condition. I forbid it. We'll send for an ambulance. It may have to wait a long time. These two will stay in the monastery until the doctor allows them to leave.
Quixote is not a Spanish name. Cervantes said to himself that the real name was probably Texana, and that his home was not in El Toboso. Now, the, the whole story is absurd. Let us put him safely to bed before we discuss the difficult distinction between fact and fiction. I thought I was in a church. You are in Osera. If only I could say mass. Perhaps tomorrow. say mass. My bishop forbids it. And you have no right, Excellency, to burn my books. I beg you, not death by pin stamps. Dreaming or delirium? Membrino's helmet. What does he mean? Papa's base in Don Quixote War. His ancestor, he believes. The professor seems to regard that as nonsense. So does the bishop, which inclines me to think it may be true. I'm sorry and ask forgiveness for the half bottle. Why, Sancho, is that you? I don't offer you a governorship, Sancho. I offer you a kingdom. A kingdom? You will find the kingdom. We must stop him now. No, let him cloud his dream. Is this the way to your church? You might fall. finds no pattern and no chalice, surely he will wake. Who the day before he suffered, took bread in his sacred hands, and with his eyes looking up to heaven, achipite et manducati ex hoc omnis. Enum canic sanguinis 
me. Vater Nostra, qui es in celis, sanctificeta nomen tuum, ad venit regnum tuum. Agnes Dei, qui talis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Surely you'll be. Corpus Christi. Compañero, you must kneel, compañero. Fact and fiction again. One can't distinguish with any certainty. I've come to say goodbye. You're very welcome to stay here a while. I suppose they'll be taking his body to El Toboso tomorrow. I'd do better in Portugal. You don't want to attend his funeral? Well, what you do with the body isn't very important, is it? Well, besides, my presence there would disturb the bishop. The bishop has been on the telephone this morning. He wanted to make quite sure that Father Quixote would not be allowed to say Mass, even in private. I explained the sad circumstances which made it quite certain that his order would be obeyed. In the future, that is. What we listened to last night could hardly be described as a Mass. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. There was no host and no wine. We saw no bread or wine, but Monsignor Quixote obviously believed in the presence of the bread and wine. Which of us was right? We were. You mean I may have received communion? Does that matter to you? To me, no. But in the eyes of your church, I'm a very unworthy recipient. I'm a communist. There was no host. Do you think it's more difficult to turn empty air into wine than wine into blood? I prefer to believe there was no host. Why? Because once, when I was young, I half believed in God. And some of that superstition still remains with me. I'm a little afraid of mystery, Father. And I'm too old to change my spots. I prefer marks to mystery. You are a good friend. And you're a good man. You don't want my blessing. But you'll have to accept it all the same. Don't be embarrassed. It's just a habit we have. Like sending cards at Christmas.
to be a foreigner. He's not a bishop, he's a Monsignor. Is that your car parked up there? Belongs to the Monsignor. I told him to keep it locked. He'd even left the key in the starter. It's not a safe thing to do around here. <laughs> Seems peaceful enough. Have you seen a man with a bullet hole through his right trouser leg and a false moustache? No. Shiokui credidi. No hat or jacket. Striped shirt. Nobody like that's been around here. Got the bullet hole in Zamora. Narrow escape, one of ours. Not passed anyone on the road? No. What's he done? Robbed a bank at Benaventi. Shot the cashier. Escaped on a Honda. Found abandoned. The Honda, I mean. Five kilometers away. That's why it's not safe laving your car with the key in the starter. La queus contritus des et nos liberatis sumus. What's the Monsignor saying? Uh, I'm not a linguist myself. Well, keep your eyes open. And don't give a lift to a stranger. Why were you talking Latin to him? It seemed a good thing to do. Why? I wanted, if possible, to avoid a lie. What lie? I was suddenly confronted with the, you might say, temptation. How did you find the cheese in the car? Yes, but I gave it to him. The Guardia? No, no, the fellow he was looking for, of course. You mean you've seen him? Yes, that's why I was afraid of questions. For God's sake, Father, where is he? In the boat of the car. It was careless of me to leave the key in the car. Somebody might have driven away with him. Don't you realize what it means, hiding a fugitive from justice? What made you do it? He asked me to help him. He said he was falsely accused and mistaken for another man. With a bullet hole in his trousers. I was going to die. What kept you? We're trying to do our best for you. Take my advice. Clear off. That way. Keep to the fields until you can drown yourself in the city. How can I keep to the fields with shoes which are rotten from the soles up? You robbed a bank. Get yourself a new pair. I didn't rob a bank. Search me. You call yourselves Christians? I don't. I'm a Marxist. Yeah, but I've got a pain in my back. Oh. Oh, I can't walk a step. I think I've got some aspirin in the car. Corpus Christi. Compañero. You must kneel, compañero. Fact and fiction again. One can't distinguish with any certainty. I've come to say goodbye. You're very welcome to stay here a while. I suppose they'll be taking his body to El Toboso tomorrow. I'd do better in Portugal. You don't want to attend his funeral? So what you do with the body isn't very important, is it? Well, besides, my presence there would disturb the bishop. The bishop has been on the telephone this morning. He wanted to make quite sure that Father Quixote would not be allowed to say Mass, even in private. I explained the sad circumstances which made it quite certain that his order would be obeyed. In the future, that is. What we listened to last night could hardly be described as a Mass. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. There was no host and no wine. We saw no bread or wine, but Monsignor Quixote obviously believed in the presence of the bread and wine. 
Which of us was right? We were. You mean I may have received communion? Does that matter to you? To me, no. But in the eyes of your church, I'm a very unworthy recipient. I'm a communist. There was no host. Do you think it's more difficult to turn empty air into wine than wine into blood? I prefer to believe there was no host. Why? Because once, when I was young, I half believed in God. And some of that superstition still remains with me. I'm a little afraid of mystery, Father. And I'm too old to change my spots. I prefer marks to mystery. You are a good friend. And you're a good man. This burn my books. I beg you, not death by pinstabs. Dreaming or delirium? Membrina's helmet. What does he mean? The barber's base in Don Quixote War. His ancestor, he believes. The professor seems to regard that as nonsense. So does the bishop, which inclines me to think it may be true. I'm sorry and ask forgiveness for the half bottle. Why, Sancho, is that you? I don't offer you a governorship, Sancho. I offer you a kingdom. A kingdom? You will find the kingdom. We must stop him now. Let him play out his dream. to your church. You might fall. Credo in unum Deum, Patrum Omnipotentem, Fertorum Celi et Terre, Visibilium Omnium et Invisibilium. Stand among pests. I would have you go forth, like your famous ancestor Don Quixote, on the high roads of the world. He was a madman, Monsignor. Would you have me tilt at windmills? It was only by tilting at windmills that Don Quixote found the truth on his deathbed. There are no birds this year in last year's nests. It's a beautiful phrase, but what did he mean by it? I have never quite made it out myself. But surely the beauty is enough. 
Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Monsignor. Deeply sorry. Capitalist money turns the heads of us. You've been let down by your party. It's not a question of my party. Three men alone have done this to me. Ah. Business expansion, bribery. There are traitors in every party. Even in yours, Father Quixote, there was Judas. And in yours, Stalin. Wash my hands of El Toboso. Next time you could be re-elected. Tonight, I shall get drunk. Come to my house. Have a glass of honest vodka. Oh, Polish vodka, Father, from a Catholic country. I've never tasted vodka. from the bishop. So I see. Oh dear, oh dear. Can I be of any assistance, Monsignor? You most certainly can, Father. I am the Bishop of Matopo. Bishop of Matopo? Africa. Impartibus infidelium. Is there a garage near here? Yes, but I'm afraid it's closed because of a funeral. The proprietor's mother-in-law has died. May she rest in peace. What a nuisance. He should be back in a few hours. A few hours? Is there a restaurant nearby? Monsignor, if you would honor me by sharing my simple lunch and a glass of our local wine. A glass of wine is essential in my situation. Thank you.
forget what I'm told. I wasn't in the confessional. No, but it's very much easier if one is a priest to treat everything one is told as a confession. I never repeat what I hear, even to myself if possible. I like your friend Marx. This is the work of a good man. Shh. But he's a religious man. All that is solid melts into air. All that is holy is profaned. Father, you're intoning as though you were in church. Heavenly ecstasies of religious fervor, chivalrous enthusiasm. Father, that man is listening to every word you say. Of course, like all prophets, Marx does make mistakes. I don't like the look of his briefcase. It's an official-looking briefcase. I can smell the secret police from 30 meters away. I do find his admiration for the bourgeois a little far-fetched. What do you mean he hated the bourgeois? Perhaps, poor man, he was rejected by what he loved. Listen to this, Sancho. Father, if you must read aloud, Please read in a low voice. The bourgeois, during its rule of scarce 100 years, has created more massive production forces than have all the preceding generations put together. Application of chemistry to industry and agriculture, steam navigation, railways, electric telegraphs, Makes one almost proud to be a bourgeois, doesn't it? What a magnificent colonial governor Marx would have made. Oh. I only hope he doesn't come back with the police. Get the number of the car, Father. We'll turn at the next corner. Don't look round. Don't look round, Father. We'll go into a bar, have a drink, and go out the back way. And of myself. I need my collar and my pachera. We're going into battle, Sancho. I need my armor, even though it's as absurd as Mambrino's helmet. <sighs> What's happening? The auction is over, Monsignor. They are fetching Our Lady from the church. It went better than last year. The winner paid 40,000 pesetas. What does he win? Salvation for his sins. It's cheaper at the Monsignor. price. Monsignor. Monsignor, will you give me a hundred peseta note? Why? I want to give it to Our Lady. Won't Our Lady accept coins? This is blasphemy. What do you mean, Monsignor? This is our feast day. You made your protest, Father. Come away. Call the Guardia! Put down, Our Lady. How dare you clothe her like that? You might as well carry her through the streets naked. For God's sake, Father, come away. Who are you? I am Monsignor Quixote of El Toboso. He's an imposter. Monsignor, ask him where the money goes. <laughs> carry on with the procession. Over my dead body. Oh, oh, oh. 
been rather a strain. I'd like a little quiet and to say my prayers. I thought you were doing a lot of that while you were driving. I was. Prayers for that poor man and to thank God for our safety. They seem all right. I'm anxious, Sancho. You have every reason to be. If that young fool is caught. I was thinking of Teresa. Something's wrong. I can feel it in my head like a thunderstorm. I must telephone her. This is Father Quixote, Teresa. Praise be to God. Where are you? Leon. Leon? You shouldn't have told her. Father, the bishop's in a terrible state. Is he ill? He's in a holy rage. What about? About you, of course. They say you're mad. The Guardia have been searching for you in Avila. I haven't been in Avila. They know that now. They say you were in Valladolid and you changed clothes with the Red Mare to escape. It's not true. How do you come to know all this, Teresa? Do you think I'd let them use your telephone, not leave the door open? Let me speak to Father Herrera. But he's gone to see the bishop. The bishop's in such a state, it wouldn't surprise me if he telephoned... And you will certainly remember that he also wrote to Titus. No, I'm wrong. It was to Timothy. Do not confine thyself to water any longer. Take a little wine to relieve thy stomach. What I don't understand, Monsignor, is why you changed clothes with this communist. It was only a collar. Why even a collar? He thought I must be suffering from the heat, so I gave it to him to try. A story came to the ears of the parish priest in Valladolid that a bishop or a Monsignor had been seen coming out of a scandalous film. What was so shocking was he was seen coming out laughing. Not laughing, Excellency, perhaps smiling. I don't understand your presence at such a film. I was deceived by the innocence of the title. Which was? A Maiden's Prayer. 
I sometimes wish the title of maiden were confined to our lady. Of course, these are minor matters in the eyes of the Guardia Civil, however scandalous they may appear in the eyes of the Church. But I and my colleague in Avila have had very great difficulty in persuading them to shut their eyes to what was a grave criminal offence. We had to approach a high authority in the Ministry of the Interior, luckily a member of Ober's Day. He saw at once it would do the church untold harm if a Monsignor appeared in the dock charged with helping a murderer escape. Not a murderer, Excellency. He misfired. A bank robber. No, no, it was a self-service store. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me with petty details. The Guardia and Leon found the man in possession of your shoes, clearly marked inside with your name. He did have a gun. They seem to have established that you hid him in the boot of your car and lied to the Guardia. I didn't lie, Excellency. The Guardia never asked me if he was in the boot. I am trying very, very hard. I repeat, very hard to believe that you are too ill to realize what a dangerous situation you are in. Well, I suppose that applies to all of us when we begin to think. I was coming to that. Dangerous thought. Your communist companion no doubt led you to think in unacceptable ways. He didn't lead me, Excellency. He gave me the opportunity. On this holiday, I have felt a freedom. A very dangerous freedom, it seems to have been. But our Lord gave it to us, didn't he? Freedom. That's why they crucified him. Freedom? Freedom to break the law? You, a Monsignor? Freedom to go to pornographic films, help murderers. He missed. And your companion, a communist, talking politics. No, no, we discuss much more serious things than politics. Can't you go just a little faster, Father? I don't want to overtire, Rosinante. In my opinion, a spoiler. Yesterday, the poor thing covered an immense distance. We are less than 200 kilometers from El Toboso. Her usual stint is 10, when I fetch wine from the cooperative. I think we're being followed. Why should we be followed? Who knows? I ask you to put on your purple bib. I did put on the socks. It's the Guardia. You see, Sancho, they weren't concerned with us. All the same, I wish you'd been wearing your bib. They can't see your socks. This sausage reminds me of the ring finger of Santa Teresa in the convent at Avila. You can see it if you want. And the confessional where she talked with St. John of the Cross. When I was a student, I used to visit a most beautiful girl in Avila. Why did you give up your studies, Sancho? I think perhaps her long golden hair was the main reason. She was the daughter of a chemist. He was a secret member of the party, and she used to supply us with clandestine contraceptives. I never had to practice coitus interruptus. But human nature is a strange thing. I used to go afterwards and say I was sorry to Santa Teresa's ring finger. I laugh at your superstitions, Father, but I shared some of them in those days. Perhaps that's why I seek your company now. To find that youth again, when I half believed. And everything was so complicated and contradictory and interesting. I never found things so complicated. Will you never in love with a woman, Father? Never. Not in the way you mean. Were you never tempted? Never. Strange. 
and inhuman. All the same, I was impressed by the silence of the audience. They took it so seriously. I was really afraid I might laugh. You wanted to laugh? It was difficult not to laugh. Lord, if I'm incapable of human love, I must be incapable of love for you. Make me human. Let me feel temptation. For God's sake, Father, if you've taken a vow of silence, go into a monastery. There are the Carthusians at Burgos and the Trappists at Orsera. I've sometimes thought, may God forgive me, that I've been specially favoured because I've never been troubled by sexual desires. You're very lucky. Am I? Not to know temptation. Locum refugee. The bishop seems to be a foreigner. He's not a bishop, he's a monsignor. Is that your car parked up there? Belongs to the monsignor. I told him to keep it locked. He'd even left the key in the starter. It's not a safe thing to do around here. Huh. Seems peaceful enough. Have you seen a man with a bullet hole through his right trouser leg and a false moustache? No. Shiokui credidi. No hat or jacket. Striped shirt. Nobody like that's been around here. Got the bullet hole in Zamora. Narrow escape. One of ours. Got past anyone on the road? No. What's he done? Robbed a bank at Benaventi. Shot the cashier. Escaped on a Honda. Found abandoned. The Honda, I mean. Five kilometers away. That's why it's not safe leaving your car with the key in the starter. La queus contritus des et nos liberatis sumus. What's the Monsignor saying? Ah, I'm not a linguist myself. Perhaps tomorrow. say mass. My bishop forbids it. And you have no right, Excellency, to burn my books. I beg you, not death by pin stabs. Dreaming or delirium? Membrino's helmet. What does he mean? Papa's base in Don Quixote War. His ancestor, he believes. The professor seems to regard that as nonsense. So does the bishop, which inclines me to think it may be true. I'm sorry and ask forgiveness for the half bottle. Why, Sancho, is that you? I don't offer you a governorship, Sancho. I offer you a kingdom. A kingdom?
you will find the kingdom. You must stop him now. Let him have his drink. to your church. You might fall. like a camel. If she shakes you up suddenly, that thing might go off. You wouldn't be very happy with another man's death on your conscience. What do you mean, another man? That poor fellow in the bank whom you killed. I didn't kill him. I missed. Anyway, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bank. It was a self-service store. Guardia said a bank. They'd say it was a bank, even if it was a public lavatory. Your moustache has fallen off. It's stuck to your shoe. My shoe. At least he didn't assault me, like the galley slaves assaulted my forebear. You wait here. I'll go and buy you some shoes. If you don't mind. I'll go into the cathedral. It's been rather a strain. I'd like a little quiet. And to say my prayers. I thought you were doing a lot of that while you were driving. I was. Prayers for that poor man. And to thank God for our safety. They seem all right. I'm anxious, Sancho. You have every reason to be a fat young fool is caught. I was thinking of Teresa. Something's wrong. I what in the name of the Blessed Virgin have you done to the father? He'll wake up, come in. Go and make him a strong cup of coffee. Don't worry. You'll soon be yourself again. How did I come here? I gave you a little injection to calm you. Wasn't I calm? Well, you were asleep. But I thought in the circumstances our coming might make you excitable. Father Herrera was with me, of course. And you brought me here against my will? This is your home, my old friend. You've even undressed me. We took off your outer things, that's all. It's a blessing to see you alive and well. Well, not quite well yet. After a few weeks of quiet. A few weeks of quiet, indeed. 
I shall get up. Oh, Teresa, where are my trousers? Father Herrera locked them up in a cupboard. God forgive me, Father. I didn't know what he intended. How is he? You two have been guilty of a criminal act. Abduction, medical treatment without the patient's consent. I had clear instructions from the bishop to bring you home. Bugger the bishop. those two on the telephone to each other morning noon and night it's always excellency 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 you think that father Herrera was talking to God himself my ancestor was at least spared the bishop when he was brought home I don't think they'll try to burn my books Monsignor Quixote his excellency is here I'm sorry excellency if you'll Give me a few minutes. Stay where you are, Monsignor. I trust you are feeling better. I'm feeling perfectly well, thank you. My holiday has done me good. Not if the reports I have received are true. What reports? I do not pay attention to every rumor, Monsignor, and I'll take your word if you give it to me that you didn't go into a certain Excellency, perhaps smiling. I don't understand your presence at such a film. I was deceived by the innocence of the title. Which was? A Maiden's Prayer. I sometimes wish the title of Maiden were confined to Our Lady. Of course, these are minor matters in the eyes of the Guardia Civil, however scandalous they may appear in the eyes of the Church. But I and my colleague in Avila have had very great difficulty in persuading them to shut their eyes to what was a grave criminal offence. We had to approach a high authority in the Ministry of the Interior, luckily a member of Earth's Day, he saw at once it would do the church untold harm if a Monsignor appeared in the dock charged with helping a murderer escape. Not a murderer, Excellency. He misfired. A bank robber. No, no, it was a self-service store. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me with petty details. The Guardia and Leon found the man in possession of your shoes, clearly marked inside with your name. He did have a gun. They seem to have established that you hid him in the boot of your car and lied to the Guardia. I didn't lie, Excellency. The Guardia never asked me if he was in the boot. I am trying very, very hard. I repeat, very hard to believe that you are too ill to realize what a dangerous situation you are in. Well, I suppose that applies to all of us when we begin to think. I was coming to that. Dangerous thought. Your communist companion no doubt led you to think in unacceptable ways. He didn't lead me, Excellency. He gave me the opportunity. On this holiday, I have felt a freedom. A very dangerous freedom, it seems to have been. But our Lord gave it to us, didn't he? Freedom. That's why they crucified him. Freedom? Freedom to break the law? You, a Monsignor? Freedom to go to pornographic films, help murderers. He missed. And your companion, a communist, talking politics. No, no, we discuss much more serious things than politics. Though I admit I hadn't realized Marx had so nobly defended the church. Marx? Of course, I cannot agree with all his ideas, but I was most moved by his tribute to religion. I cannot stay here any longer and listen to the ravings of a sick mind. I shall pray for you.
you and Rosinante. I'm afraid El Toboso is no longer hope for me. Then we'll find you another one, Father. They're the Trappists of Docera, but you wouldn't feel at home in a monastery. Well, I can leave you with them and cross the border into Portugal. I've got good friends in the party there. The food will be bad at the monastery, Father. The wine, too, perhaps. Well, we'd better stock up with some Galician wine. The Manchegan's going to be finished. Are you going up there to buy wine? Possibly. Give it up. He's mad. Who's mad? Senor Diego. He's got a cellar full of wine up there, yet he won't let me try a single glass. I was prepared to take a dozen cases. He said he didn't like my tie. There could be a difference of opinion about your tie. As a businessman, I can tell you that's not the way to do business. Now it's too late to get the wine elsewhere. What's the hurry? I promise the priest. I always keep my promise. It's a promise to the church. What does the church want with a dozen cases of wine? Well, it's not just the promise. I may lose my place in the procession. Unless the priest will take cash instead. He won't take checks. that about? No, no, no. You cannot buy wine here today. Signor Diego will have nothing to do with the feast. Feast? We don't want it for a feast. You're not Mexicans? No, we are not Mexicans. We are on our way to the Trappist de Rosera. Of your charity, Father, just a few bottles. How do you know I'm a priest? When you've been a priest as long as I have, you will recognize a priest, even without his collar. This is Monsignor Quixote from El Toboso. Quixote? Well, not surely. An unworthy descendant. <laughs> And, and your friend? I can't claim to be a true descendant of Sancho Panza. Just a family name in common. <laughs> come, come and sit down and have some wine. Thank you. So would you sit over there? You know, a, a Monsignor has never sat beneath my fig tree. <laughs> sit with me, Senor Diego. I will fetch two more books. Yeah, and... Sancho, I didn't mean to break your balloon. Was it a gift for a child? No, Father, it was a gift for the girl who brought the champagne. Don't worry, I have some more. Have you never seen a contraceptive before? Where have you brought me, Sancho? To a house I knew as a student. Wonderful how these places survive. They're more stable than any dictatorship, and war doesn't touch them, even civil war. You should never have brought me here. Don't worry, Father. I've explained things to the lady of the house. She won't be bothered in any way, and it's very quiet on the third floor. But why, Sancho? Why? I thought it was a good idea. If we'd stayed at a hotel, we would have had to register. So we're hiding in a brothel. Could put it that way. Hmm. What's so funny? Oh, it's wrong of me to laugh. But I just thought, what would my bishop say if he knew? A monsignor in a broth. Well, why not? Christ mixed with publicans and sinners? All the same. I think I'd better go upstairs and read myself to sleep with the prophet Marx. But be prudent, dear Sancho. Be prudent. Why don't you say what you're thinking, Father? About what? 
About last night, of course. I was very pleased with the marks you lent me. I'm not talking about marks, I'm talking about me. You? You know well enough what I was up to. I told you clearly enough last night. Ah, but I'm trained to forget what I'm told. I wasn't in the confessional. No, but it's very much easier if one is a priest to treat everything one is told as a confession. I never repeat what I hear, even to myself, if possible. I like your friend Marx. This is the work of a good man. But he's a religious man. All that is solid melts into air. All that is holy is profaned. Father, you're intoning as though you were in church. Heavenly ec The four Mexicans who pay the most carry her in the procession. But this is unbelievable. Well, go and see for yourself. Immediately. No, no, the procession won't have started yet. Finish your wine first. I'm sorry, Senor Diego. This is a truly magnificent wine, but I have lost my taste for it. You have told me my duty. Go and see for yourself. So many banks in such a small place. Mexican money. There are times when I'm tempted to call you Compañero, but not yet. What do you propose to do, Father? I don't know. I'm frightened, Sancho. What of them? Frightened of myself. I need my collar and my pechera. We're going into battle, Sancho. I need my armor, even though it's as absurd as Mambrino's helmet. <sighs> What's happening? The auction is over, Monsignor. They are fetching Our Lady from the church. It went better than last year. The winner paid 40,000 pesetas. What does he win? Salvation for his sins. It's cheap with the Monsignor. price. Monsignor. Monsignor, will you give me a hundred peseta note? Why? I want to give it to Our Lady. Won't Our Lady accept coins? This is blasphemy. What do you mean, Monsignor? This is our feast day. You made your protest, Father. Come away. Call the Guardia! Put down, Our Lady. How dare you clothe her like that? You might as well carry her through the streets naked. For God's sake, Father, come away! Who are you? I am Monsignor Quixote of El Toboso. He's an imposter. Monsignor, ask him where the money goes. <laughs> carry on with the procession. Over my dead body. At least Russian prisoners labor for the future of their country. This was for the glory of one man. I understood. This was meant to be a chapel of reconciliation, where the fallen on both sides were to be remembered. Can't you go just a little faster, Father? I don't want to overtire, Rosinan. In my opinion, a spoiler. Yesterday, the poor thing covered an immense distance. 
We are less than 200 kilometers from El Toboso. Her usual stint is 10, when I fetch wine from the cooperative. I think we're being followed. Why should we be followed? Who knows? I asked you to put on your purple bib. I did put on the socks. It's the Guardia. You see, Sancho, they weren't concerned with us. All the same, I wish you'd been wearing your bib. They can't see your socks. This sausage reminds me of the ring finger of Santa Teresa in the convent at Avila. You can see it if you want. And the confessional where she talked with St. John of the Cross. When I was a student, I used to visit a most beautiful girl in Avila. Why did you give up your studies, Sancho? I think perhaps her long golden hair was the main reason. She was the daughter of a chemist. He was a secret member of the party, and she used to supply us with clandestine contraceptives. I never had to practice coitus interruptus. But human nature is a strange thing. I used to go afterwards and say I was sorry Santa Teresa's ring finger. I laugh at your superstitions, Father, but I shared some of them in those days. Perhaps that's why I seek your company now. To find that youth again, when I half believed. In everything professional, where she talked with St. John of the Cross. When I was a student, I used to visit a most beautiful girl in Avila. Why did you give up your studies, Sancho? I think perhaps her long golden hair was the main reason. She was the daughter of a chemist. He was a secret member of the party, and she used to supply us with clandestine contraceptives. I never had to practice coitus interruptus. Human nature is a strange thing. I used to go afterwards and say I was sorry to Santa Teresa's ring finger. I laugh at your superstitions, Father, but I shared some of them in those days. Perhaps that's why I seek your company now. To find that youth again, when I half believed Everything was so complicated and contradictory and interesting. I never found things so complicated. Were you never in love with a woman, Father? Never. Not in the way you mean. Were you never tempted? Never. Strange. And inhuman. I've been protected. It's rather like the taboo of incest. Not many people attempted to break that. There are so many alternatives to incest. Like a sister of a friend. I had my alternative, too. She lived a very long way from El Toboso, in France. She lived at Lisieux. The Carmelites there have a special vocation to pray for priests. I hope. Eve. She prays for me. And I believe you're speaking of St. Therese of Lisieux. Glad there's one communist who's heard of her. You've done nothing wrong, Sancho. They judge my appearances. Have another glass of wine, brother. In your company, if I'm not careful, 
I'm afraid I shall become what I've heard called a whiskey priest. Maybe that's why I feel so hot. Vatanostak, Pies and Shale, Sanctificeta Nomen to him, and then Regnum to him. Agnes Dei, qui talis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Surely healed. Corpus Christi. Compañero, you must kneel, compañero. Fact and fiction again. One can't distinguish with any certainty. I've come to say goodbye. You're very welcome to stay here a while. I However scandalous they may appear in the eyes of the church, but I and my colleague in Avila have had very great difficulty in persuading them to shut their eyes to what was a grave criminal offence. We had to approach a high authority in the Ministry of the Interior, luckily a member of Earth's Day. He saw at once it would do the church untold harm if a Monsignor appeared in the dock charged with helping a murderer escape. Not a murderer, Excellency. He misfired. A bank robber. No, no, it was a self-service store. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me with petty details. The Guardia and Leon found the man in possession of your shoes, clearly marked inside with your name. He did have a gun. They seem to have established that you hid him in the boot of your car and lied to the Guardia. I didn't lie, Excellency. The Guardia never asked me if he was in the boot. I am trying very, very hard. I repeat very hard to believe that you are too ill to realize what a dangerous situation you are in. Well, I suppose that applies to all of us when we begin to think. I was coming to that dangerous thought. Your communist companion no doubt led you to think in unacceptable ways. He didn't lead me, Excellency. He gave me the opportunity. On this holiday I have felt a freedom a very dangerous freedom, it seems to have been. But our Lord gave it to us, didn't he? Freedom. That's why they crucified him. Freedom? Freedom to break the law? You, a Monsignor? Freedom to go to pornographic films? Help murderers? He missed. And your companion, a communist, talking politics? No, no, we discuss much more serious things than politics. 
though I admit I hadn't realized Marx had so nobly defended the church. Marx? Of course, I cannot agree with all his ideas, but I was most moved by his tribute to religion. I cannot stay here any longer and listen to the ravings of a sick mind. I shall pray for you. Yes? I've told the young fellow from the garage to go up to the church and keep Father Herrera busy with a long confession. I thought I heard... What was all that about? No, no, no. You cannot buy wine here today. Signor Diego will have nothing to do with the feast. Feast? We don't want it for a feast. You're not Mexicans? No, we are not Mexicans. We are on our way to the Trappist de Rosera. Of your charity, Father, just a few bottles. How do you know I'm a priest? When you've been a priest as long as I have, you will recognize a priest, even without his collar. This is Monsignor Quixote from El Toboso. Quixote? Well, not surely. An unworthy descendant. <laughs> and, and, and your friend? I can't claim to be a true descendant of Sancho Panza. Just a family name in common. <laughs> come, come and sit down and have some wine. Thank you. So would you sit over there? You know, a, a Monsignor has never sat beneath my fig tree. <laughs> Sit with me, Senor Diego. I'll fetch two more books. Yeah, and some more wine, Jose. We'll have a better feast than the Mexicans. <laughs> oh, if all the priests here were like my grandson. I, I can trust him, even with the vineyard. I, I saw him today pulling up the weeds, but I couldn't see them clearly any longer, and I thought, well, it's time for me in the vineyard to go. If only Jose had married and had a son. <laughs> Is this his parish? No, he lives 40 kilometers away. Some of the priests here have driven him from his old parish. He was a danger to them. The poor people loved him because he refused to take money and say responses when anyone died. Gabble a few words and ask a thousand potatoes. <laughs> so, the priests had him sent away, even though there were some good Mexicans who defended him. But who are these Mexicans? Uh, they have too much money, and they have been away too long. But you're not taking any harm, more, senor, please. Tell them about the Mexicans. Well, they were all born here, but they left Galicia to escape poverty and went to Mexico. They wanted money, and they found money. And now they've come back to spend money and build rich houses. They give money to those priests, thinking they're giving to the church. Yes, and the priests are greedy for more. They prey on the poor, and they prey on the superstition of the rich. Perhaps some of the Mexicans really believe they can buy their way to heaven. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. I never drink coffee. What a violent woman. She said something very rude about the bishop. Like all of us, she has her prejudices. The bishop would not have been pleased, Monsignor. Have you experience of parish work? Not directly, Monsignor. I wish you wouldn't call me Monsignor. I prefer Father. I have been His Excellency's secretary for three years, since I left Salamanca. The bishop suggested I stay for a few days to help you settle in. 
a caution on His Excellency's part, which I do not consider really necessary. You may find it difficult at first. There are many Teresas in El Toboso. Will you have steak for lunch, Father? Two steaks, Teresa, please. Tomorrow I'll get us four cases of wine. We can't trust the wine in Madrid. Thanks to me, we've got an honest cooperative here. Do we have to go to Madrid? I don't want to overtire Rosinante. The purple socks. Sancho. Your ancestor had a proper respect for the uniform of a knight errant, even though he had to put up with the barber's basin as a helmet. <laughs> you are a Monsignor errant, and you must wear purple socks. They said the Don was mad. They'll say the same of me. Indeed, I must be a little mad. I'm mocked with the title of Monsignor, and I'm leaving El Toboso in the hands of that young priest. I would like breakfast tomorrow morning at half past seven, after Mass. Mass is at six. At seven. Good night, Teresa. I've always said Mass at six. I would hope that by saying Mass at a later hour, there'd be more in the congregation. Do you not agree, Monsignor? Two or three, perhaps. Even one will be worthwhile. Father Eribelt Jona, a German. All the same, very sound on moral theology. I'm afraid I haven't read him for many years. Moral theology doesn't play a great part in parish work. I should have thought it essential. In the Achipite et manducati ex hoc omnis. Hoc est enum corpus meum. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificeta nomen tuum, ad venit regnum tuum. Agnus Dei, qui talis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Surely healed. Corpus Christi. Compañero, you must kneel, compañero. Fact and fiction again. 
one can't distinguish with any certainty. I've come to say goodbye. You're very welcome to stay here a while. Oh, I can't walk a step. I think I've got some aspirin in the car. What size shoes do you take? I can't think why you went to rob a bank in rotten shoes. I took the wrong pair by mistake. Where do you want to go? Drop me by the here. Uh, the cathedral in Leo. You are a very bad driver. What happened to your Honda? Guardia said you abandoned it. You ran out of petrol. I've forgotten to fill the tank. Can't you drive any quicker? No. Rosinant is very old. She's apt to break down at over 40. I wish you would relax and put that gun down. Sometimes Rosinante behaves a little like a camel. If she shakes you up suddenly, that thing might go off. You wouldn't be very happy with another man's death on your conscience. What do you mean, another man? That poor fellow in the bank whom you killed. I didn't kill him. I missed. Anyway, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bank. It was a self-service store. Guardia said a bank. They'd say it was a bank, even if it was a public lavatory. Your moustache has fallen off. It's stuck to your shoe. My shoe. At least he didn't assault me, like the galley slaves assaulted my forebear. Hey, you wait here. I'll go and buy you some shoes. If you don't mind. I'll go into the cathedral. It's been rather a strain. I'd like a little quiet. And to say my prayers. I thought you were doing a lot of that while you were driving. I was. Prayers for that poor man. And to thank God for our safety.